Well, hello everyone, uh, back again. Uh, we've been looking at the various things that are common for all Christians to believe about the end times and the return of Jesus and uh, what are the things that all Christians believe. Uh, uh, trying to discover um, really how it all fits together. So what's the big picture? Well, we've got little pieces of the puzzle that we're learning about. And once we've seen all of those and put those pieces together, then we can start to assemble the whole picture uh, of what we're, what the end times or eschatology looks like. So uh, this uh, time we're going to be looking at the millennium reign of Christ. Uh, this is uh, probably the most difficult one in terms of there are there are several different things that people believe about this and uh, most difficult to understand and a lot of this comes down to whether we are understanding the Bible uh, literally, literally on this or figuratively and uh, I'm going to read right at the beginning of this session a passage from Revelation chapter 20 I'll grab the Bible off my shelf there um, and, and this is Revelation 20 uh, verse uh, 1 to um, 10 it says then I saw an angel this of course is John writing about what he sees in heaven then I saw an angel come down from heaven with a key to the bottom of his pit and a heavy chain in his hand. He sees the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked, so Satan could not deceive the nations any more until after the thousand years are finished. Afterward he will, we will be released again for a little while. Then I saw thrones and the people sitting on them, uh, being given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus, for proclaiming the word of God, and I saw the souls of those who had not worshipped the beast nor his statue, nor accepted his mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For then the second death holds no power, but they will be the priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. When the thousand years end, Satan will be let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations from every corner of the earth, which are called Gog and Magog. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty host as numberless as the sand on the shore. And I saw them as they went up to the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. But fire came from a heaven but fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Then the devil who betrayed them was thrown into the lake of fire that burns with sulphur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. If, uh, if you were to read that passage literally, as some people do, you would believe that when Jesus returns, he will establish a thousand year reign on earth uh, with us reigning with him. And uh, there are some people that believe that. Other people believe that those uh, things refer to, uh, are referring to symbolic events. And uh, so in this session, we're going to look at what is the millennium reign of Christ and, uh, uh, and uh, the various different beliefs, because these, this is a thing that perhaps uh, is most uh, um, uh, contested within the church. There are several different viewpoints on this. So uh, the, uh, the millennium takes its name from the thousand years, uh, obviously meaning millennium, uh, mentioned in Revelation 20, uh, verse 2 to 4. We've just read those verses. And it's a subject of debate within the church. And we should be careful that we're not too strident in our defence of our particular viewpoint. Um, in this study, I'm going to outline the three main viewpoints on the, the millennium reign and um, what scriptures relate to the millennium. So the first uh, one I'm going to have a look at is called a millennialism. Um, a a millennialism that it literally comes from the Latin and a means not in, obviously in Latin. So the, this really means there's no millennium. There's not a millennium reign, a literal reign of Christ. In fact, an a millennialist. Uh, believes that this is not a literal kingdom but a spiritual kingdom so the passage that we have just read they would take it uh, spirit to mean sp a spiritual kingdom 
rather than a literal kingdom. So therefore this reign of Christ is in heaven and is in the hearts of believers on earth right now. So it is the present church age. We looked at that before. Um, so Revelation 20 verse 1 to 6 is where we are now. We are in the millennium reign of Christ. So there's not a literal physical uh, um, millennium reign, but a spiritual reign of Christ in our hearts now. And of course, in heaven. And so 1,000 years is, is symbolic of a long time. And uh, they would argue that uh, this type of symbolism is often used in, in, Bible, uh, in the Bible and, and in the sort of apoc apocalyptic literature that was around at the time. And somebody who's trying to describe a long time would simply say a thousand years. And that is not exclusive to Bible writers. In fact, uh, Hitler used the same thing, a thousand year Reich. He didn't mean a literal thousand years. He meant a long time. This is going to be, uh, I think he really was hoping for a forever, wasn't he? Obviously, that's an entirely different context. But the use of a thousand years to describe a young, long time is the point that I'm making. It's the simplest of the three positions to explain. And for an amillennialist, they would say, we are now in the millennium reign. The next event to happen will be the return of Jesus. And then uh, the resurrection of believers and unbelievers, judgment, a new heaven and a new earth, and the eternal state. So the events, the order of events is very simple. We're here now, Jesus will come back, and then everything else will follow that. Scripture often used to support this is where Jesus uh, said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given uh, to me. So really he's saying at that moment my kingdom is already established. All authority has been given to me. So for an amillennialist the kingdom of God was established by Jesus on earth at that time and in our hearts spiritually. The second main viewpoint, and you'll understand I'm just uh, giving a, a really uh, an overview of these things. If you want to study them further, there's lots of material available. It, the second viewpoint is, is post-millennialism. This takes the view that this will be a physical reign of Christ on earth, but not through Jesus reigning, but through the church reigning. And it takes the position that Jesus' return will not be until after the millennium and this kingdom will be established by the church on earth so again a thousand years is symbolic of a long time clearly we're already uh, much further than a thousand years into this um, and and it, it and it, it uh, and it understands this the church will grow stronger and stronger until its influence on world government means there is a reign of worldwide peace and justice. So imagine the church continues to grow and grow and eventually it becomes so powerful that it takes over world government and establishes righteousness and justice uh, through uh, political reign on earth. That's the idea. So it's a literal Christian reign, but it is not the reign of Jesus, it's the reign of the church on the earth and Jesus obviously reigning over the church church so his his uh, kingdom is established and once that is done then jesus will return so that's uh, post-millennialism the, the the final uh, one to have a look at is called pre-millennialism and this is the view that takes the verses that we read at the beginning revelation 20 literally so jesus will return and he will establish his reign on earth along with the believers who've been resurrected with glorified bodies. So he will come, he will establish his reign, and together with him we will reign. Uh, that Satan will be bound for a thousand years, uh, and the end of a thousand years Satan is released for a period of time to deceive the nations. All this uh, literally taking Revelation 20, verse uh, 1 to 10. Most would consider that this is a literal 1,000 years, although again, some would see it as symbolic of a long time. 
So what do we know about the millennium? What does the Bible say about the millennium reign of Christ? Well, uh, really, uh, we, we, we know, first of all, it is 1,000 years or more. Uh, either it's the literal 1,000 years described in Revelation, or it's longer than that, because clearly it's already been 2,000 years uh, uh, where, since Jesus, so for an amillennialist or postmillennialist, we're already 2,000 years into this uh, thing. What do we know about the millennium? Uh, well, first, secondly, that Jesus will reign. Uh, Revelation 20 verse 4 uh, describes that already. And Zechariah 14 verse 9 also tells us the same thing. And also the saints will reign with him. Again, Revelation 20 verse 4. Revelation 2 verse 26 and 27 describes the same thing. Revelation 3 21. Luke 19 verse 17 to 19. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2 to 3, it says this. Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial cases? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? And that, in the context of that, is Paul's writing to the church, telling them not to have lawsuits against one, one another, uh, not to take other Christians to court, because you should be able to sort these things out yourself, because one day... You are going to be judges of all the earth. Uh, the fourth thing that we know about the millennium is that Satan will be bound. Um, Revelation 20 verse 2 says that Satan will be bound. Um, this is more difficult uh, for those two positions that take uh, those verses symbolically. It's a difficult thing to understand um, that Satan is bound now. And they would argue that rather being than being bound uh, literally, uh, he is bound from having an effect or power over the lives of Christians, uh, those that are submitted to the kingdom of God. And they would use um, Matthew 12, verse 28 to 29 there, where Jesus talks about uh, binding the strong man and giving, uh, and that the disciples are given the same power. So Satan they believe is already bound and um, we now have a freedom to preach the truth on the earth they also believe that at that moment jesus took away the power of satan to go into heaven and uh, and uh, we we see in in job he goes to heaven and accuses job before god and uh, he no longer is enabled to do that um However, premillennialists would take those verses literally, uh, that Satan will be literally bound. In fact, it says in Revelation uh, 20, he is seized, bound, thrown into the abyss, which is locked and sealed. A, 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 a modern description of that might be solitary confinement. What else do we know about the millennium? Um, well, in Isaiah 65 verse 20, it tells us that people will still die in the millennium obviously that is um uh you know we understand that would be true if it is both of those first two uh, with, which is now it's a spiritual kingdom but for those after jesus returns we will have glorified bodies as christians but others will still die so that uh, is an interesting thing isaiah 65 verse 20 said this never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not live out his years, he dies at a hundred. He who dies at a hundred will be thought to be a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. This is an incredible prophecy that, um, you know, at one point in time, people who only live to a hundred years old were considered to be uh, short-lived. Um, you know, there are some parts of biblical prophecy which cannot be fitted into the church age where we are now, or the eternal state, heaven and hell. So they must fit somewhere else. And for a, someone who takes this uh, a passage in Revelation, literally, they say that is within the millennium reign of Christ. Um, however, an amillennialist or a postmillennialist would read this as symbolic. Another passage which would be in the same category that doesn't fit into the eternal state, nor does it fit into uh, where we are now, is uh, Isaiah 6 verse 6 to 11 these were verses you'll know the wolf will live with the lamb 
The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed the bear, their young will lie down together, the lion it will eat straw like the ox, the infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child will put his hand in the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters of the covered sea. Now, if you just read those verses, you can say, oh, well, that's in the eternal state, that's in heaven, in the final thing. But the next verse, in verse 10, describes people who are not part of that. So, in that day, the root of Jesse, Jesus, of course, will stand as a banner for the people. The nation will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the remnant that is left of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, to the islands of the sea. So that's describing a time which is not the eternal state, it's not heaven and hell, it's not now either. So uh, a literal uh, understanding of Revelation 20 would put that uh, prophecy into there. And another one that's in the same category, uh, Psalm uh, 72, verse 8 to 14. I'm not going to read it, but it describes some people forced to come and worship Jesus in a greater kingdom than Solomon. And then Zechariah 14, verse 16 and 17 says, Then the survivors from all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. If any of the people of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord Almighty, they will have no rain. So in these verses in Zechariah, and also the same in Psalm 72, there are still unbelievers on earth, and they will be forced to go to bow the knee to Jesus in Jerusalem. And, uh, and uh, so that could not be now, nor could it be uh, in, the, uh, in the eternal state. So a literalist would say that is uh, during the millennium reign of Christ. So just to conclude with there, three clear different positions on the thousand year reign of Revelation uh, 20. There are some uh, things... Uh, that we know will take place in them and then these are clear from scripture and not denied by any of the three positions the only thing is that some would interpret them differently some would say they are literal uh, but some would say they are symbolic a few events do not fit either into the church age or the eternal state particularly Zechariah 14 these events are seen by post-millennialists and amillennialists as figurative or symbolic, but of course by uh, a pre-million list as literal. Uh, that's all for this session. I just want to recommend, uh, if you want to read further on that, it's right next to my head actually, but Wayne Grudem's uh, Systematic Theology um, has got a really good treatment of those various three positions. You can read them all, you can understand all of their positions and the reasons uh, for doing so and I recommend if you want to do further study you can read that borrow it from me if you're part of Harbour Church or get a hold of it um, it's a really good uh, systematic theology anyway but on this uh, uh, particular subject it's very good uh, next time uh, when we're here we'll look at uh, a time of trouble or a time of tribulation and see what the Bible says about that great thanks for listening see you again